Lists are everywhere in life, from your shopping list to the list of directions you subconsciously follow to get to your house every single day, as well as the instructions you're following in this very course. Lists are everywhere on the web too, and we've got three different types to consider. HTML lists are used to present a list of information in a well-formed and semantic way. There are three different types of lists in HTML, and each one has a specific purpose and meaning. We have an unordered list, which is used to create a list of related items in no particular order. We have an ordered list, which is used to create a list of related items in a specific order. And we have a description list, which is used to create a list of terms and their descriptions. The UL HTML element represents the unordered list of items. Typically, these are rendered as a bulleted list. These are used to mark up lists of items for which the order of the items doesn't matter, something like a shopping list. The OL HTML element represents an ordered list of items. These are typically rendered as a numbered list. These are lists in which the order of items does matter, like a set of directions or instructions for cooking something. Both of these types of lists ordered and unordered, need to have a list item within them. The li HTML element is used to represent the item in a list. It must be contained in a parent element, so we have to nest it inside of an ol or a ul. Let's take a look at how we can create these types of lists. Here I have my code pen and I've added some horizontal rules and some h2s just to separate the content. Within the section that is highlighted as an unordered list, we're going to create an unordered list. So I start off by creating my opening and closing UL elements. Inside the UL elements, I'm going to put the list items. These are the individual items that I want to include inside of my list. So we'll just make a list of lists. So we could do something like a shopping list, a list of your favorite colors, and a list of sea creatures we hope to see. As you can see, the order of these items is not specific. They really could go in any sort of order. Typically, unordered list items are displayed with a bullet, which can be of several forms, a dot, a circle, or a square. In addition to making a list, sometimes you'll want to nest list items. So maybe I wanna put a list inside of a list. If you want to do that, you're going to wrap the nested list inside the li that you want to be the parent. So I'll create another unordered list, and this will just list some sea creatures that I want to see. So once again, this unordered list is going to have the list items. I like to call these little list babies, and we'll just write some sea creatures. Now, as you can see, when we look at the rendered version of the list, the nested list is indented and the little bullets appear differently. Unordered lists have three styles for the bullets. Normally, we would control the styling of the bullets with CSS, but it is possible to control it using straight HTML. What you would do to change the style of the bullet is you would go into the UL tag and we're going to add an attribute of type and then we would set that equal to in this case I'll write square and you can see that my bullets now switch to a square if I come up to this first unordered list and once again we set the type attribute and this time I'm going to set it to circle you can see that these now switch to the hollow version of the bulleted list. The other option for the display of the bullets is to use disk. And disk is going to render out the bullet items in the default filled in circles. So for now, we can use these HTML attributes to control the types of bullets that we get. But once we learn CSS, this is something that we will ultimately change and control with CSS since it is part of the presentation of how the page is going to look. Let's create an ordered list as well. I'm going to come to my h2 tag and we'll go ahead and we'll create an ordered list. 
So to create an ordered list, we use the OL tag. And the OL tag is going to have its own set of list items or list babies. Ordered lists are going to be things where the order matters. This could be steps to follow in a game, or it could be the steps that you need to take to get to my house, or it could be a list of ingredients for a recipe. And maybe the list of ingredients are going to be set up in the order that we would use them within the recipe. As you can see, the ordered list is going to display the list items numerically. So they are going to go ahead and by default display as one, two, three. Now, like the unordered list, we can change the display of these items. Let's just go ahead and make a nested list here, just so we have a few more list items to work with. So once again, I'm going to go into the list item where I want to create my nested list. And then I'll just create a nested list here. So as you can see, my nested list is also displaying numerically. Now, when you're creating nested lists, you may want your list items to display in a different way. So we have a couple of different attributes that we can add to our ordered list to control how the list is going to show. The first thing that we can do is we can control the starting number. Sometimes you might want a list to display with a different starting number. To change the starting number, we'll add the start attribute, and then we'll put an equal sign, and inside of the quotation marks, we'll put the number that we want to use as a starting number. So if I say five, and we allow this to refresh, you can see how now the numbering starts at five. In addition to this, we can also set the type, similar to what we did in our unordered list. If I use the type attribute for an ordered list, the values that I can add are a small a. This will switch my list to display with lowercase letters. If we switch this to an uppercase a, it'll display with uppercase letters. We can also use Roman numerals. So once again, if we use an uppercase I, it'll display with uppercase Roman numerals. And if we use a lowercase i, it will display with lowercase Roman numerals. And finally, you could just put a one in there, which will set it back to the default values. That's obviously not needed if you just want it to display numerically. Once again, this will ultimately be controlled using CSS. But for now, I did want to show you some of these attributes and allow you to be able to control the display of your list items. The final list that we're going to discuss is the description list. The description list is a list of items with a description or definition of each item. This is good if you're defining terms or you're trying to create some sort of glossary. So let's go ahead and look at how we can make a description list. I'll come down into the code where I have my description list H2. To create a description list, we use the DL tag, and the child elements for description lists are going to be the DT, which stands for description term, and then we follow that by a DD tag, which stands for description definition. Let's just make a couple more description terms and description definitions. As you can see, the description term appears above the description definition. The description definition is indented. I often like to wrap my definition term inside of a strong tag to make it stand out a little bit more. I think it makes it a little bit easier to see what the definition term is and to separate the elements. So that's a wrap up for our lists. Once again, unordered lists create the bulleted lists. They are not associated with any particular order. Then we have the ordered list, which can display numerically or alphanumerically or Roman numerically. These are lists that you'll want to use when you're trying to display a step-by-step -step set of instructions. And finally, we have the description list, which is great for definitions or some sort of glossary of information.